Welcome to the Shifting with Marley podcast. I'm Marley. Thank you for joining me wherever you are. All that I ask of you, the listener, is to have an open mind and an open heart. And in return, I offer you myself. Today, we're going to return to the topic of healing from burnout, but from a whole new perspective. We started this conversation back in episode 25, Healing from Burnout, and continued the conversation in episode 29, Getting Free. Today, we are going to explore this topic deeper from the lens of human design. When I was deep in my burned out state back in 2021, learning about my human design was a game changer for me. It was the tool that was the most effective at helping me understand my burnout and helping me heal and make much needed changes in my life. I honestly feel like in many ways, human design saved my life. So I'm excited to bring you into the world of human design today. There is truly endless potential for healing, growth, evolution, embodiment, and alignment using human design. I recommend before you dive into this episode that you look up your own human design chart, and it also may be really useful to look up the human design charts of your family members as well. It's my intention with this episode to help us understand ourselves on a deeper level and to learn some actionable tips and tools to help us heal from burnout and live more in alignment with our true selves. Here to guide us today and share her wisdom is Christy Yael from This Sacred Life. Christy is a human design authority, alignment guide, entrepreneur, and business owner. Welcome, Christy. Thank you. I'm so incredibly honored and happy to be here today. Thank you. Thank you so, so much for being here today. I am so grateful and also so excited because this is one of my favorite topics of all time. Mine too. Before we dive in, Christy, can you please let people know where they can connect with you? Absolutely. My website is thissacred.life. So www.thissacred.life. And you can find me at Instagram at thissacred.life. Christy, I'd love to start today getting right into it by talking about what leads to burnout for each of the types in human design. And for those listening, that's generator, manifesting generator, projector, manifester, and reflector. And Christy, perhaps we could start with what leads to burnout for generators and manifesting generators just because they are the majority of the population. Yes, absolutely. So let me just start really quickly by saying like, what is human design? Because some people aren't all that familiar with it yet. Human design is is this really incredible, powerful, and accurate tool for self-discovery, deconditioning, and learning how to live in alignment with our true authentic self. And when I talk about alignment with authentic self, what I mean is, you know, from the day we're born, like we're born perfect. We're born perfectly designed. We come into this life perfectly designed. But from the day that we're born, we take on conditioning as a way to form secure attachments with first our caregivers and then with society at large. And we do this in order to survive. It's a survival mechanism. What happens through that process of attachment, of secure attachment over like healthy attachment, is that we lose parts of ourselves. And so what human design will show us is where we've lost connection to our authentic selves when we can release this conditioning and remember who we authentically are, then we're in alignment. Then our life becomes more effortless. There's less burnout. There's more ease, flow, joy, abundance, because we're aligned and we're not suppressing or hiding parts of ourselves in order to conform. Burnout often comes from trying to be like everyone else, trying to be this conditioned version of what we think we should be in society. So I just wanted to start with that, like this is the basic primer. And for those that are curious, so human design is, it's really a synthesis of these very ancient 
system. So it's a synthesis of the chakra system, the I Ching, Western astrology, and then the Kabbalah tree of life. And it's this really beautiful, I find it to be like a very masculine system that's wildly accurate. So if you haven't checked it out, even if it sounds a little weird to you, I encourage you to check it out because it's so accurate. It will blow your mind. And what you should experience when you have a human design reading is a level of feeling seen and known that resonates so deeply. Like it shouldn't feel like new information. It should feel like, oh, this gets me so deeply. And I can see through this reading how I've lost parts of myself. And then from there, it reminds you, it reflects back to you who you authentically are. And then it gives you the permission slip to release the conditioning and to step fully into your most empowered, authentic self, which is everything I'm wildly passionate about. And it is amazing. I loved hearing you say like you really felt like it changed your life. It saved your life because like when we really start to live in alignment, we really come into our center of personal power. And from that space, like everything's possible. Everything becomes like all of a sudden we have boundaries where we thought it was hard to have boundaries. All of a sudden we're fully expressed where we thought we couldn't speak our own truth. Like everything starts to fall into place just by aligning with our design. So anyway, I'm so passionate about it. Okay, I'm going to start with generators. Okay, so burnout is a misuse of our energy, right? In the most technical definition of it. It's a misuse of our, like our chi or our life force energy. Each energy type has a strategy and an internal response that tells us if we're out of alignment. And that internal response is called the not self theme. So what I'm going to go through is I'm going to step through each energy type and I'm going to talk about how the energy works and also what the strategy is for that energy type, and then what it what it means to be out of alignment, what that not self theme is. Does it sound like a good place to start? Yes. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Generators. So I'll start with generators. Generators are the majority of the population of these five different energy types. Um, often generators and manifesting generators are considered one type um, because they're both sacral beings, which means that they respond from their sacral, which I'll get into in a minute. They are similar in some ways, but when it comes to burnout, their energy actually works very, very differently. And their the reason for their burnout is actually incredibly different. So for today, I will separate them. So generators are 37% of our population. They're sacral beings, which means they have this incredible sacral magnetism. So our sacral is our, it's our connection to our desire. It's our, it's our creativity. It's our, it's our sexual energy. It's, it's the, the passion we have. This magnetism, it's very alluring. When a generator is in alignment, when they're like deeply connected to their sacral, they have what's called an enveloping aura. It's just they pull people into them because it's so magnetizing. They have this incredible zest for life. When they're really focused on their passions, they have this very strong and reliable energy. It can be very, very consistent. Like a generator, when they're in the zone, they like, don't bother a generator. When they're in the zone, they do not want to be interrupted. They've got blinders on and they can work for a really long time on the thing that they're passionate about. The way that their energy is designed is to be really used up through the day. So until they're like exhausted in a good way, and then they go to sleep, they have this amazing restful sleep and they wake up in the morning and they're ready to go. They've recharged their battery. Their strategy, the strategy of that sacral is to respond, which means they are really built to respond to life. And when they are aligning with that, it's amazing the magic that can happen for generators when they're in that sacral response. The indicator that they are out of alignment or that they're on the path to burnout is when they're very frustrated. They feel incredibly frustrated 
And and what it often looks like for generators is they'll be they'll feel frustrated, they'll feel exhausted, they'll feel really stuck, they'll feel this heaviness in their life, and all of these things are actually suppressed desire. That's all. That's it. It sounds so simple. It's it can be challenging to untangle if you've not learned how to listen to your sacral, but like that suppressed desire will make you feel so frustrated and pent up. And, and over time, that suppression will make you feel so exhausted all the time. And for generators, what often happens as well, because they're such great workers, for lack of a better word, they're so good at getting things done. They will do a lot of things out of obligation. They'll say yes to things that they can do, even though they don't want to do them. So the things they should say no to, they're saying yes to, they get stuck in overperforming, in people pleasing. When we talk about the sacrum, and I love the way human design talks about it because it's described as like, uh-huh or uh-uh. And that uh-huh or uh-uh, you can't see me, but I, like when I say uh-huh, I lean forward. When I say uh-uh, I lean back. It's not a mental concept. It's a felt feeling in the body. It's, it's a, it's more, I almost want to say it's more animal in human design. And one of the reasons it's so powerful is because it's not about the constructs of the mind. It's not, it's actually about how we get back to the wisdom of the body. The mind is here to serve us instead of rule us. It's not here to dictate what we do. Our body is what's brilliant, right? And so when we start to listen to that sacral yes, and we start to listen to that sacral no, and what I tell generators and manifesting generators who are sacrals is if it's not a yes, then it's a no for right now. And you got to wait until it's a yes. If it's not a sacral yes, then it's off the table until it becomes a yes. Because if you try to force yourself when it's not a yes, you're just draining your battery because it's only when you're connected to your sacral that that battery is really doing what it's meant to do, which is fueling you, right? So the other thing to note is that the what's called the signature when we know we're in alignment as a generator is we feel a deep sense of satisfaction. So again, when we look at how this energy works, we want to be really aligned with our passion, deeply connected to our sacral passion, really focused on that passion, only saying yes to the things that light us up. And we want to pour all of our energy into it. And at the end of the day, we are going to be exhausted, but it's such a sweet exhaustion. It's so satisfying. And then we go to bed and then we wake up the next day and we're so lit up and excited to do it all over again. And there is no burnout. Okay, so that's generators. Manifesting generators. So manifesting generators are 33% of the population. And when we look at manifesting generators, I'm a manifesting generator. So I'm really passionate about this because it took me some time to understand how this energy works and how to come into alignment. I have a long history of burnout and being stuck in burnout, especially as an entrepreneur and as a mother who's also an entrepreneur it's been a huge theme in my life. So it's something I'm really, really passionate about. Manifesting generators are a combination of a generator and a manifester. So actually, you know what? I'm going to talk about manifestors first. And then I will come back because I think it'll make more sense. Okay. So a manifester. Manifestors are 8% of the population. So a manifester is they are our trailblazers. They're here to really initiate action from an internally generated impulse. So you look at a generator who's here to respond to the world, and then you look at a manifester, it's not coming from the outside in, it's internally generated. It can be a very intense energy, not in a bad way, in a good way, and it can be incredibly magnetic when it's used correctly. I don't love this term, but this is what they call it in human design. It has a repellent aura, which means that a manifestor's aura, a manifestor's energy will pull the right people and things towards it. And it will literally repel, energetically repel those out of alignment with its goals. It can be really 
challenging for manifestors to learn to trust the magic of this repellent aura when they're working in alignment with it, when they're really um, working with it and allowing it to work for them. It's a powerful way. Like these are powerful manifestors. That's the name. They can call in things into their lives in seconds. <laughs> it just blows my mind what a manifestor can do. But, but they have to, they basically have to get over the fact that they have this repellent aura. They are not for everyone. And it's really important for them to recognize that they're here to literally trailblaze. They're here to do things differently. They're here to forge a new path, which means looking at what everyone else is doing and trying to do that is never going to work for them. And they have to be comfortable being the outlier and being like the brave, courageous one that goes first. The other important thing for a manifester is they really always, they need to inform people before they take action, which is the hardest thing for a manifester to do because they have to be brave, because they're always doing the thing that no one else is doing. They're here to forge a new path. What they usually want to do is do it quietly behind the scenes and not tell anybody and then wait until it's done. And then they'll come out and say, hey, I did a thing. And everyone's like, who are you right now? I don't understand what's just happened. I feel blindsided. And they get caught up again in that repellent aura. And, and in order to really work with and lean into the the magnetism of of this aura of this um manifest or energy as long as they can inform it takes a lot of bravery but as long as they can say hey i'm going to do this thing i'm not asking for your permission i don't need your approval i am doing this thing i'm letting you know i'm going to go do it now <laughs> watch me like that that's how an entire legion of people will follow a manifester but they have to be brave and that's, it's hard. And especially, I feel really, really passionate about this. Um, I really think that human design is such a brilliant parenting tool because so much of our conditioning happens in our childhood from our parents. And if parents can start to understand their children right from the get-go and support them instead of suppress their authentic selves, then it changes the entire trajectory of their life. For most manifestor children, they've been kept in a box and they've been told to be quiet when they should be loud. They've been told to sit down when they should actually be off forging their own path. Like they've, they've really been taught from a very early age to suppress their natural manifestor impulses. And because they're internally generated, they really learn not to trust them. So it's it can be a real challenge. But when manifestors start to trust themselves, they're here to change the world. They really are. Before yeah. you move on. So when a manifestor is burnt out, what does that feel like? So they feel angry primarily like that not self theme is anger. And it can feel like like a high level of irritation. They can feel really stuck in their box. And again, this goes back to the conditioning of childhood. Often it's a self-imposed box, right? It's a box that they've been taught at such an early age that it's part of their subconscious conditioning, their subconscious programming that they're keeping themselves stuck in. And they're so angry and irritated about it. And they don't realize that that as an adult, that the box isn't really there and that all they have to do is really foster their own internal bravery, which you know sounds simple when I say it, but it's hard. For manifestors, like being burnt out really comes from people pleasing, codependency, ignoring that inner impulse, and a lot of masking or, or shape shifting, like really trying to be trying to be well behaved because they want to fit in, because they were taught at such a young age how important that was. And that masking, just that masking is exhausting for a manifestor. And then the other thing that that is really important for manifestors is their energy like that that internally generated impulse comes in this huge powerful burst of energy it's this like it's like rocket fuel but much like rocket fuel it burns fast right and then the fuel is gone <laughs> and then they have to rest or else they're going to experience really really horrible burnout my my mother is actually a manifester and she ran a huge company 
back in the days when women were not running huge companies and um, and she worked incredibly hard. And by the time she got to 50, somewhere around there, she was so burnt out and had so many chronic illnesses and had fibromyalgia and every chronic adrenal exhaustion, inflammation, you know, illness that you can imagine she had, she had to retire early because she had pushed and pushed and pushed it herself. And it's just such a great example of how a manifester, she was able to accomplish tremendous things, but if you can't manage your energy, there's this compound effect over time and it will not sustain itself. Okay. So that's manifestors. So we have generators and we have manifestors and you can see how they're wildly different. So then you take the manifesting generator. And a manifesting generator is a hybrid of both of these energies. They are 33% of the population and their strategy is to respond and then inform. So their not self theme is, again, it's frustration from the generator and anger from the manifester. But their signature is really satisfaction. Oh, I didn't talk about that. So the signature for manifestors is peace, which is beautiful. They are sacral beings. So a manifester is not a sacral being. Manifesting generator is a sacral being. So they still have the, that, you can think of it as like that battery where they need to really pull from their sacral all day long until they deplete themselves and they feel satisfied. But the way that their sacral works is different. So they have this very, very fast and really spontaneous nature um, it's very playful. It's very creative. It's very, it's very think outside the box. It's a really, it's a really capable and dynamic energy. They, they're known for skipping steps. They can, you know, they'll take the Ikea manual and they'll like, instead of reading like a generator, we'll read each page and put it together masterfully. Manifesting generator, I'll read like four pages throughout, like skip forward and then be like, I think I got it. And then they'll put it together. And I would say 90% of the time they'll get it. And every once in a while, they'll be like, oh, maybe I should have read it more carefully. And then they have to go back and fix it. What can be challenging for uh, manifesting generators is they don't have consistent energy like generators do. Like they'll have, like the manifestor, they'll have these big waves of energy and then they need to rest. They don't get the same level of burst that a manifestor has and they don't need this same level of rest and they don't have the same sustainability that a generator has. It's literally somewhere in the middle, but they do have to, it's like they get the wave and then they have to rest a little and then they get the wave and then they have to rest a little. And if they don't take those periods of rest, then again, there is a compound effect. And it's really interesting to look at, and I'm sure I'll say this a few times through this conversation, ultimately, you really want to understand everything about your chart because everyone's chart is unique. And so just saying, well, I'm a manifesting generator, so I know what to do. It actually depends on your chart as to whether you're more generator or more manifester, and that will help dictate what alignment looks like. So all of these elements can make a big difference. So for a manifesting generator, uh, feeling burnt out looks like annoyance. It looks like feeling really stuck. It feels like fatigue, uh, exhaustion, which again is suppressed desire. It can be really exhausting and tiring for a manifesting generator to try to keep themselves in a box and follow the rules and not just wildly express themselves as they desire. Also, one of the things that they share with the manifestor is a manifestor will start a project, but a manifestor will get exhausted if they try to finish it. They're not here to get bogged down in the details. They don't enjoy it. They want the big idea. They want to launch it in the world, and then they want to move on. Um, manifesting generators have that similarity, especially if they have more manifestor in their chart. They have this great creative outside of the box idea. They want to launch it into the world. But then if they have to sustain it, it starts to feel like, you know, when you're in school and you think and you have like homework after homework after homework, it starts to feel like that for manifesting generator. They get really bogged down in the like incessant, relentless detail of having to fulfill the project. Not for every project, but for some of them. 
And then again, you know, saying yes to things they should say no to, which is always the case for any sacral. Okay. Projectors. So projectors are 21% of the population. And I love projectors. I work with a lot of projectors. And I think they're magical, magical, brilliant beings. Projectors are, they're here to be our guides. And they're what I would call seers rather than doers. So they can see people with such great clarity. There are a few things as satisfying as being really seen by a projector because you feel so deeply, deeply seen. I think what is so beautiful about projectors is every projector has this innate wisdom within them. It shows up differently depending on your chart, but there's this innate wisdom. And when they can start to really recognize and value the wisdom inside of them and then start to share that wisdom with others, then we're able to recognize the projector. And then invitations come. So I'll talk about that in a second. But it really starts with the projector learning to truly honor their own gifts first. So the strategy for a projector is to wait for the invitation. And I'll talk about this a little bit when I talk about burnout, because the the not self theme for projector looks like bitterness. And then the alignment or what's the signature of a projector is success. And what happens is when a projector feels not recognized, they feel incredibly bitter. And they can get really stuck in victim mentality. They can get stuck in blaming other people. They can get they can get really exhausted, like deeply exhausted. I'm going to talk more about how the energy moves for projector. But they also get caught in comparing themselves to others because they're not the majority of the population. They see all these sacral beings out there doing all these things. And they're like, why is this not working for me? You know, so they have the generator envy. They can feel really impatient because they're waiting for their freaking invitation, right? But what's so brilliant is when projectors really learn to validate themselves, see and honor their own gifts, and then go out into the world and just share them from a place of like, I honor my gifts inside inside of me so much. And I just, I want to share them with the world because I'm here to serve the world because I'm a projector because that's what projectors are here to do. And so I'm here to just share this with everybody. And then we feel that, like there's literally this light that just emerges from you. And then you literally don't have to do anything. We just feel you. We recognize the brilliance within you. And the next thing you know, you're receiving all of these incredible invitations to work with people, to whatever it is you desire. But a lot of the time, projectors have have a really hard time getting clear on what their gifts are and what they're here to share with the world. And it's because there's so much conditioning that they've grown up with around how to be, and they've been taught to be a generator instead of a projector. And they're not the doers. They're not here to work 40 hour weeks. They're not here to work eight hours a day. They're here to focus their energy and be like laser sharp with their focus and really anchored into just sharing. And and from there, it's like they maximize their efficiency. And so they can do so much in such a small amount of time when they set their life up and when they really recognize what they're here to do. But often projectors, so I I work a lot with entrepreneurs and I work with a lot of projectors who are entrepreneurs and they're trying to do everything. They're trying to be all the things to all the people and they're saying yes to a lot of out of alignment invitations just because they're like, finally, I got an invitation and that's better than no invitation. So yes. And then they find they're trying to do so many things and that, that focus and that honoring, and it keep it will always come back to that, like deep honoring of self first, isn't getting fully recognized. Every projector that I've met, that I work with, always comes to me and is like, how do I do this? Because I know I'm here to be successful. I know I am. I feel it in every cell of my body. But I don't know how to do that without 
participating in hustle culture, right? Participating and working really, really hard. And it's because that that alignment theme, that signature theme for projectors, it's success. You're meant to be recognized and validated and successful in everything you do. You're a projector. Does that resonate for you? <laughs> yeah, it does. And then I'd love you to just share as well, because I think it's really easy for projectors to get burned out. And so what that looks like. There is, again, that compound effect that I was talking about. It's particularly real for projectors. I think of every, of any energy type, it's most real for projectors, which means what I see a lot is they'll like stretch themselves a little bit. They'll be like, well, I did a little bit more than I wanted to today, but that's okay. I can handle it. And then the next day it's like, well, I did a little bit more than I wanted to. And I, and then each day starts to compound on the next, on the next. And then they hit this like massive burnout where it can take, it can take a long time to recover from. It's not go have a good night's sleep, like a sacral being. It doesn't work that way. It's this compound effect of pushing yourself and saying yes to the wrong invitations and be trying to be like a generator and can really lead to, to really challenging burnout compounded by feeling bitter, feeling not recognized, feeling exhausted, feeling depleted, feeling like this whole thing sucks. Why is nothing working for me? That victim mentality, right? Like what, what's wrong with me? Um, and it's it's so important for for projectors to learn to parent themselves. Like projectors have to say at 10 o'clock, I have to go to bed now. I want to stay up till midnight because I'm working on this thing and I'm really passionate about it. It's really fun, but you can't. You just cannot. <laughs> because what will happen is the next day you'll get up unless you can take that day off to recover from that. Like in, in t unless you can really schedule yourself and work with your energy in such a way to go, okay, if I push myself here, I really have to give myself a lot of rest right on the other side of it. Not rest two weeks from now when I go on vacation, rest immediately after. I really need that time and space. Yes. That's been my experience as a projector as well. And just a deep level of exhaustion that, like you said, just getting one good night's sleep absolutely does not uh, cure. No. Yeah. It's not. It's not just, you know, just go to the spa for a day. You'll be fine. No. <laughs> no, it doesn't. And if you spent a life working out of alignment with your energy, it can take, it can take a long time. It can take a long time to learn to do it differently. It will be hard to rest. It can feel really challenging. You can feel a lot of guilt and shame about it. And it can be really hard to recognize. And it takes time to build up the evidence too, to recognize, okay, when I really start to parent myself and when I really honor, I can only work for a small amount of time and really recognizing, but when I do this right, when I work for a small amount of time and I maximize that with this amazing projector laser focus that I have, and then I drop it and I literally like unplug from it energetically for the rest of my day. And I can do that and start to do that on repeat in a way, whether it's a day or a week or however you schedule your life, right? Where you you really start to see the compound effect on the other side. And you really start to see the positive evidence of like, wow, I can achieve and accomplish so much in such a small amount of time while honoring my energy. And I don't have to be in this burnout cycle to be successful. But it does take some deconditioning to do. And I think as well for a projector, the guilt and shame around resting runs really, really deep. And I, from my experience, that's one of the things that takes the longest to recover from. It is the hardest to, to reprogram for sure, for sure, for sure. Yeah. And that, again, that's part of the parenting, right? You really have to just tell yourself, this is what I need to do in order to live my desired life. Like this is what I need to do in order to be successful. And so I'm going to do it. And over time, I'll start to build up the evidence that it is the right way because you've been taught to live as a generator. 
you know, institutional education teaches us to be generators. You got to start the task, follow through, be successful, work hard, work hard, work hard. I, I still struggle with the work hard. And it teaches us to sit there all day, every day, and that you're expected to be able to learn and accomplish and do right for eight or more hours a day, every day. Yeah, 100%, 100%. And that that's the only way, the only way to be successful is if you you sit and attend for a long, long period of time. I grew up thinking there was something wrong with me, that that wasn't working for me. I'm like, oh, it must be me. (laughs) It's my problem. Right. And I think that's exactly that's the case for every projector is that they think that it's them instead of recognizing, well, actually, no, it's society that's only set up, you know, the learning education system for one type of person. And the reality is, and this is a whole other podcast, I could talk a lot about this because I have children that don't fit that that can't be successful in the the education system the way it's been set up it just doesn't work for them and their unique gifts and their unique challenges it just doesn't work for them and I had a similar experience growing up it was really hard for me to fit into this education system where a percentage of the kids will thrive and everyone else sort of falls off and struggles and takes on all of this programming that they then have to deal with midlife as adults when, you know, when things aren't working, when they can't understand why, you know, the job, the profession they've chosen that they were told to choose was, isn't working for them anymore. And they're too exhausted and et cetera, et cetera. So. Oh, I'm getting emotional. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I, you know, I really believe that, you know, if every parent could understand human design, but I think if every human could understand their human design and start to really honor how perfectly designed they are and how we're not meant to all be the same. We're not. We are not meant to all work exactly the same. So human design uses the language of like tribal community a lot as a way to describe everything, really. And if you think of, say you have a community of 100 people, right? Each person in that community You'll have people within that community that have some similarities, but if everyone in the community is exactly the same, well, that's not the nature of humans. But when everyone starts to honor their gifts, honor what they're here to provide for the community and work in service to the community as a whole, then everyone is honoring their authentic selves, honoring their authentic gifts. Everyone is contributing and everyone is is happy because they've really connected to their own self and self-love within themselves. So, okay, reflectors. Reflectors are our unicorns. They are 1% of the population. I love reflectors. They are our wise ones. So they are really able to see what the rest of us can't. And the way that a reflector's energy works is they they have completely, they have completely open energy centers. So what this means is they energetically absorb an environment that they're in. So they take on everything that that environment has to tell them, and they can see quite quickly what is healthy or unhealthy about that environment. So going back to my my community of 100 people, you've got 100 people, and one of them is a reflector. But you only need one wise reflector who is saying telling the community or reflecting back to the community, the health of the community, and then advising us on where the needed corrections are, right? You only need one. Their strategy is to wait a lunar cycle, which every reflector I sit with is like, do I really have to wait a lunar cycle? That's 28 days. The reason that they say this is because reflectors take on the energy of their environments, each environment that they move into, they're taking on that energy, which means that their interpretation and understanding of the environment and themselves is different. So the advantage of going through an entire lunar cycle is they move through their environments, their multitude of environments, and they're constantly checking with themselves as to how they discern or how they view the decision that they're desiring to make, right? 
It doesn't apply for small life, for small decisions. Where do I eat lunch? You don't need to wait 28 days. But if you're making a huge life decision, if you're trying to decide, should I change my job? Should I move to another country? Yeah, yeah. Wait a month. Wait a month because it will take a few weeks. It will take some time to gain clarity. And you'll really, when you really start to work with this consciousness as a reflector, you can really start to see, oh yeah, I can see how I think one thing and then I start to think another and then I start to think another. But over time, over time, I'd start to gain this understanding of deep clarity that feels like assurance. I love that the, like the not self theme, the out of alignment theme for a reflector is disappointment. And the the alignment theme or energy for a reflector is surprise. And so what I really understand that to be is when reflectors are in alignment, they walk through all these environments with a place of absolute wonder and curiosity and this like readiness to be surprised by whatever they're being presented with. And the flip side of that is a disappointment and a guardedness and a cynicism and like a closed heart. Open heart, closed heart is another really simple way of looking at it. Um, burnout for reflectors, they have to have time in their own energy. They just have to. They take on so much from every environment they're in that they have to spend more time than they think they do in their own energy in order to reset. And they need to be really, really mindful of the people that they are spend time with and the environments that they immerse themselves in because they are these sponges, really. They absorb everything and they can't not. So there's there's no like trick or tip to not absorb the environment they're in. They are uniquely and perfectly designed for that. So they just have to be very mindful and careful of the spaces they put themselves in. Now, the flip side of that is, you know, it's a magical, what, what I would call like a human design hack when I'm working with the reflector, especially in business, like, well, the number one thing, the first thing we look at is put yourself in spaces and surround yourself with people you want to calibrate to. Like pick the people who are doing the things you want to be doing, achieving the goals you want to achieve, put yourselves in those rooms over and over and over and over again, because you will magically start to calibrate to them. Um, because you're taking on so much of their energy. The other thing for reflectors is they really need to recognize their own uniqueness. And so for them, really understanding their unique design, really understanding the defined gates, really understanding how their energy works is really, really important because, again, they've been conditioned to try to live like other people and their energy is so unique that that does not work for them. And that leads to some pretty horrific burnout. And what does that feel like for a reflector? Because they're also a non-sacral being, right? So is there a lot of like exhaustion as well for a reflector when they're burnt out? Yeah, a lot of the exhaustion for for a reflector comes from not spending enough time in their own energy. Yeah. And, and often, and again, like one of the shortcuts for most reflectors is get yourself in your own energy by yourself and put yourself in nature get yourself so grounded, get yourself in water, get yourself on, on soil, get yourself with trees, like get yourself so connected to nature because that's going to help you come back to self and it's going to help you, you know, with your burnout. That was a lot. I think I talked a lot more than I thought I was going to, but that, there we go. There's your breakdown of <laughs> burnout with the energy type. Thank you, Christy. I love how accessible you make human design and I can just really feel your passion coming through and it's amazing. And just thank you so much for sharing all of that. I just find this so helpful because it just highlights how everyone is unique. What leads to burnout is different from person to person and that being in that burnt out state can look and feel differently for everybody. And I think having that awareness is really, really helpful for each of us and also for the people in your lives, like signs to look out for so that we can help our family members, support our children, support ourselves. And for me, it just, all of this just invites in a lot of compassion and awareness mm -hmm. for myself and also the people in my life. And it helps me release a lot of judgment of myself and the people in my life, because 
just as an example, I'm a projector, but a lot of my family members are generators and manifesting generators. That's the majority of my family members. And learning human design helped me realize we are all very, very different. Our energy levels are different. And that's okay. We are literally designed differently. And that's okay. And learning that just really gave me permission to be different, to start honoring my own needs and making the changes I needed to make. And it just, it also helped me understand my family members on a different level and understand the family dynamics on a different level. And yeah, I think that's why it's so life-changing. Yeah, absolutely. Well, and I think that like there's this old mode of parenting where parents they expect that their children will be like them, right? So they're projecting what their children are supposed to be like based on their own lived experience. And you can see with human design, this does not work <laughs> because like, I have a projector son. If I expected my projector son to be like me, it would push him so out of alignment and it would push him into, into really learning to not trust himself. That's the core, right? Really taught to not trust our own internal system, our own internal wisdom. We know the day we're born, we know how we're supposed to operate, but then we forget along the way. And that's why it's so powerful. That's why it's so life-changing when people start to really learn to trust themselves and listen. And it helps to have a blueprint you know, it helps to go, okay, well, what what works for projectors because I'm a projector? And then you start to follow that. And then you see, okay, the blueprint works. This is magical. I feel more like myself than I've ever felt. And then you can go deeper into like, now what makes me unique from the other projectors? And then you find yourself at a more and more and more granular level. And it's, yeah, it's so powerful. So powerful. And I love that we're also highlighting all the conditioning from both our our family, our parents and society and just the education systems. And there's just so much conditioning. And I just think it's so important to just highlight how unique we all are and we don't all fit into the same boxes. And I think that conditioning also suppresses the trust in ourselves, and also suppresses us listening to our bodies and the cues our bodies are giving us and our energy levels, right? And just that, that pushing, right? That pushing through that results from a lot of conditioning is a lot of what leads to the burnout for all the different types in their own way. And, you know, there's a saying that I believe it says it's it's a generator's world, right? Because they are the majority of the population. So technically it's a generator's world. And I just want to say, as a projector, as a non-sacral being myself, you know, it's really challenging to try to fit in to that generator world. And I just want to say for those non-sacral beings, I see you, I feel you, and I'm tired too. (laughs) (laughs) Yes, yes, yes. But hopefully less tired, less tired as you come more and more into alignment. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And it's so important to find your people, right? It's one of the things that I'm going to do is actually have energy type groups where we just meet once a month so that you can, so that projectors can meet with other projectors and see that they are not alone and see that it's not just them and see that it's not them, right? It's not, oh, there's something wrong with you. It's actually you're perfectly designed. And when you can put yourself in a room with other, projectors who are having very similar experiences, then again, it starts to empower you and you start to learn to trust yourself more and more and more. Absolutely. And that's been one of the tools for me in, in healing from burnout that that has been the most impactful is talking to other projectors and sharing our experiences and just being seen and heard on that deep level. And that's definitely been one of the most impactful tools for me that has helped me heal from burnout and also prevent burnout from reoccurring. Yes, 100%. 100%. Christy, are there any other tips and tools you want to share for each of the types to help heal from burnout and prevent that burnout from reoccurring? It's really helpful to also like understand your authority. So like the number one, when I look at burnout, we look at 
you know, where are you in the sh- the shadow of, and the shadow would be like, like the not self or the, the low frequency, the challenge of your energy type, right? Where you're in the people pleasing and saying yes to things that you should be saying no to that when you're in the shadow of your energy type and when you're not living through your authority, right? So a projector waiting for an invitation, a sacral being responding when you're not doing that. Everybody wants to live like a manifester, especially in business. They all want to inform. They all want to just go out and do the thing. And when anyone but a manifester does it, it doesn't work very well. So again, like really learning what is your authority and how can you learn to trust your authority? Sorry, I messed up my words. Let me back up. Your strategy is how you interact with the world. So that's your, if you're a sacral, you're responding. If you're a projector, you're waiting for your invitation. Your authority is how you make decisions. They sound similar, but they're actually quite different. I'm trying to think of a really clear way to describe it. So like the the challenge with authority is that in our society, if we go back to conditioning, we're really taught to make decisions with our minds. Human design says, no, don't do that. Make decisions from your body. Everyone has a different authority. I'll use me, for example. So I'm a, my energy type is a manifesting generator. My strategy as a sacral being is to respond. I am an emotional authority, which means that the way that I... I make decisions are through understanding and waiting out my emotional wave. So I won't get into all of the details here, but this is what I would encourage people to look at. Look at your energy type, your strategy, which we covered already, and then your authority. So like you're a self-projected projector, right? And that's all about the G-Center. And so it's really about talking everything out. It's beautiful. I love that you have a podcast. It's fantastic. It's perfect alignment for you, right? Yeah. And only projectors have self-projected authority. So it's a really important part of your design. If you don't work with your authority, then again, that can lead to burnout because it can lead to pushing and trying to make decisions through your mind, it can lead to pushing. It can lead to what I would call looping or analysis paralysis, which is I don't know how to make a decision. I can't make a decision. At the core of all of this is just not trusting yourself. And when you can really anchor in these three things, then you learn to trust yourself. You learn to honor your unique energy type authority and strategy. And then everything gets easier. It does across the board. I've seen it over and over and over and over and over again. It all starts to get easier. Beautiful. I think this episode is going to help a lot of people. Christy, thank you so much for sharing so much wisdom today. I'm like so, so grateful. And I just want to emphasize as a projector, the things that helped me the most when I was healing from burnout, besides talking to other projectors, like taking a lot of breaks honoring the ebbs and flow of my energy, taking naps, incorporating naps into my life was huge. Getting outside in nature, you mentioned the importance of that for a reflector, but I also think it's super, super important for any non-sacral beings or projectors and manifestors as well. Although it's important for everybody, let's be, let's be clear. (laughs) Get outside in nature as much as possible. Having really strong boundaries, right? Human design gave me the permission to have really, really strong boundaries with work, with relationships, all of it. And also working from home as much as possible was really, really transformational Mm. for me as a projector and prioritizing alone time. So I think you mentioned that is important for a few of the types. And I found that for, for me, just being alone as much as possible has just been really, really important. And then the final thing I'll just share is like getting horizontal. So like literally laying down outside on the ground, on the bed, on the couch, whatever it is without distractions, just getting horizontal every day for, you know, as much as my day allows was really, really important as well as I've been healing from burnout. And I think when we really start to understand that we're these you know, electromagnetic beings, right? And that every energy type takes on 
energy of the people they're with and the environments they're with, how important that alone time is, that, you know, aura time is, that pure aura time is what it's called, just to be totally alone, to be in your own energy and to unplug. One of the things that um, to look at, like how a family system is connecting energetically to look at how everyone is plugging into everyone's energy. And you really start to see when you start to synthesize the charts, how it's creating a, a certain energy within the family and how everyone is, you know, energetically feeding off of each other and how important it is for everybody to be in their own space for periods of time to return back to themselves. Mm, so beautiful. Yes. There's so many layers to human design. That's what I'm saying. I think it's just like the most helpful tool. Really there, honestly. Christy, I'd love to hear your burnout story. You mentioned that's been a big part of your journey. You're a manifesting generator. I'd love to know what, what your burnout story has been and how you, you know, have used human design now to help prevent burnout from reoccurring. I'll lead with, it's still something I work on. My specific, and again, this is why I encourage everyone to really understand their unique design because I'm a manifesting generator, but my the specific defined gates that I have are particularly prone to working exceptionally hard and, you know, being constantly in motion and not doing well at rest. Like I'm and it's really understanding my gates was really, really helpful to understand how to move out of the shadow frequency and move into the higher, more aligned frequency so that, again, that would help me prevent burnout. But so for me, yes, I am the queen of burnout. So I've been an entrepreneur for 16 years. The very first company that I founded, I co-founded with my husband, was in the very beginning. I had no idea what I was doing. I had, I had the fortune of growing up in a business world just because of the nature of the, my parents and step parents and things and i had spent time i had a brief foray in the investment banking world and but i ultimately had a creative background i had a, a theater arts background and so i came to my first entrepreneurial business from a creative through a creative lens which is a manifesting generator was beautiful i was skipping steps and figuring it out and thinking outside the box. And I was incredibly passionate about it. But there was a point where the passion, the passion couldn't make up for the lack of experience because of my specific chart and the way I'm designed and the incredible drive that I have and the like I'm designed for like drive and ambition and hard work. I really leaned into self-education and working as hard as humanly possible. And I would say the first six years of that first business, we had a lot of artistic success. We, we grew very, very quickly. We were artistically very successful. We were not very financially successful. Um, we were like managing. I was doing a lot of the work on my own. And I would say I was working easily 90 a hundred hours a week and raising my children, like with my iPhone in my hand, thank God for smartphones. They had, you know, I'm so grateful because I was able to juggle 8 billion things simultaneously. I'm playing with my child and doing the thing. And also I'm like getting back to a million people at the same time. I never stopped. I never really rested. I hit burnout so spectacularly that like I full adrenal burnout. The first time we took a, I took a break, like a day off. I spent half the day, like just, we went out to the woods, to this place out in nature, which was beautiful. And like, I was, I didn't even know what to do with myself. I was so exhausted. I could barely function. I was like, oh my God, I have got to figure this out. At that point, all I had relied on was hard work, and will, I have a defined heart. I have a defined ego, like a defined will. I'm able to work incredibly hard. 
And I was just relying on this relentless drive to pull me through even when my exhaustion was saying, please stop. And then at about that point, about six years in, I started to really understand how energetics could work in business. And when I started to understand that, I started to see, oh, I think I see why we're not making money. Because we're very successful. Like I was winning awards. I was like, everyone was like, who is this person? She's doing all these amazing things. Like I'm, I was, I had really, we had had this spectacular rise, but we weren't making any money. And I could see how I was actually blocking the flow of abundance into our life. I was doing all of the the leadership and the the running of the company. I was doing all the CEO work. So I was really the one because I was so stuck in scarcity and hustle and burnout. I was really the one that was stopping any of that from coming in because I wouldn't stop. I was in this constant state of scarcity and fear. And that was my fuel. I was terrified. I was terrified if I didn't stop working this hard that the whole thing would fall apart. I was really, it really felt like it was only staying afloat because of this relentless drive I had. And so I started to learn energetics. And when I started to learn energetics, that changed everything. And then I was like, ah, there's the money. Okay, this is better. And I started to find more rest and ease and started to find a better balance between masculine and feminine, between that endless hustle and drive and burnout energy. And like, there's actually a receiving energy here. That means I have to surrender. I've got to lean back. I have to allow things to come to me. I have to allow things to come in. And I was able to do a lot once I understood the energetics of both the masculine and the feminine and finding the balance between the two. And then we built another company and it grew very, very quickly. And it was it was a beautiful example of, you know, you do something for long enough and you understand how things work. And then it had this like just add water quality. It was the right place at the right time and the right amount of knowledge and education and understanding of masculine and feminine energetics and how all these things can work out. But still, it was still hard to detach my ego from hard work. And I think still to this day, it's the thing that I struggle with the most. And I'm so incredibly grateful that I have human design because anytime, because I burnt out so badly before, I compromised my body, right? So I have a pretty blown out adrenal system that I have to be very mindful of. I'm prone to chronic inflammation. Like all of these things where I have this alert system in my body that says, uh-uh, uh-uh, don't do that. Slow down, slow down, slow down. And anytime that comes up, I'm so clear on why. I know exactly where it's coming from. I understand my design and I know how to remedy it. And still I struggle. Like I still struggle with that. Like, yeah, but, <laughs> yeah, but don't I have to work hard? No, no, actually you don't. You just have to be embodied and you have to trust and you can lean back. And it doesn't mean there isn't always work, but when I work in alignment with the ebbs and flows of my manifesting generator energy, with those sacral pulses, right? With that big sacral pulse when I have the desire and I'm lit up and I'm passionate, I'm like, yeah, let's go. And then I'm like, I think I'm getting a little tired. That, I think I'm getting a little tired. Okay, great, take a break. Instead of, it's okay. I'm just going to grab a cup of coffee. I'll keep going. I'm just a little bit tired, but I'm still really passionate. So I'm going to keep going. And then I'm burnt out because I pushed past the first signal that said, okay, now rest because you know better because you will understand your design because you have all, had all these lived experiences and you know that there's a compound effect, right? So yeah, I mean, I'm so fortunate for my lived experiences because I work with so many people who struggle with burnout and this mentality of I have to work hard to be successful. Mm, yeah, you can now take your lived experiences and use it to help people. I love it. Thank you so much for sharing your story. That's really powerful. And, you know, as I was thinking about how to share my burnout story related to human design, I was like, it's actually really simple. I can boil it down extremely simply. I am a projector and I was living like a generator my entire life. Like literally that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. 
And then it eventually led to severe burnout. But I had to then deal with, right? And because I mentioned my whole my family's generators and manifesting generators. So that's how I learned to live. And so once I was burnt out and learned human design, my healing journey was basically deconditioning and unlearning the way I had been showing up in the world and the way I had been working and then learning how to be a projector yeah. and Absolutely. learning how to be in alignment with my unique design. And of course, it's a continual and evolving journey. And it was not a quick and easy transition. I mean, this is like years and years in the making and something I still struggle with, of course. And it definitely requires a lot of self-awareness and grace. <laughs> mm, yes, <laughs> a lot of grace. Yes. Because even for generators, and I will say, like, we talk a lot about living in a generator world, but I know a lot of burnt out generators. I work with a lot of burnt out generators who are so stuck in and have so much conditioning and programming around saying yes to things they should say no to and often feeling like, I don't even know what I desire. I'm not even clear exactly on what that desire is or how I untangle it from all the things that people want from me. Every single energy type has this like inherent shame around like what's wrong with me? Why? Am I burnt out? Why is this so hard? Why am I so exhausted? Why, why, why? And it's, yes, the antidote to shame is grace. It just is. Always, 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 always. Yeah, yeah. Full body so, chills. I love it. Yeah, and just knowing that like nothing is wrong with you. You've just been programmed to be more attuned to making other people happy than making yourself happy and to learning to tune out your own inner wisdom and your own inner authority, right? And when you start really learning to listen to your own inner authority, and that's why I say authority is so important, right? If you're a splenic projector and you don't know how to listen to your splenic, like a splenic projector aligned is why is the like what they know like is it's pretty remarkable but when you don't know how to listen to that inner wisdom it is so easy to tune it out same with the sacral it's so easy to just override it with the mind and fear and that's what our conditioning is based on fear Christy you know you and I are obviously both obsessed with human design right for good reason but how do you think Speaking of alignment, right, bringing it to a higher level perspective, how do you think human design can help humanity evolve? Well, I'll go back to what we said in the beginning. You come into this life perfect. You're perfectly designed. And part of being perfectly designed means that you're perfectly designed with very specific gifts to help humanity evolve. When you can honor and remember what those gifts are and honor them and utilize them, that changes the world. Like I work with so many people who feel this calling to serve, this deep desire and calling to help people, this bigger purpose that hasn't been manifested and realized in their lives, but they struggle so deeply to get clear on what their purpose is how to tap into this inner knowing, and then how to actualize this in their life because everything they've been taught and told up to this point is to ignore all of that. And so it really starts with understanding what parts of you are you and what parts belong to and the societal conditioning, ancestral conditioning, your family of origin. And then from there, learning to trust yourself again. Because again, we come in trusting ourselves. We come in knowing who we are and we lose it. Day one, day one. It's remarkable. And again, what, you know, what we've talked about and keeps coming up is when you really learn to trust yourself, you feel empowered. You really begin to connect with your authority as a human being, it really becomes easy to say yes to the yeses and no to the no's, to set the healthy boundaries, to honor yourself and your, your own needs above others. We've been taught that that's selfish. 
but it's actually selfless because when you can focus on self first, when you can honor yourself first, when you can fill your own cup, then everything else is overflowed. That's, and it's a, it's this waterfall of abundance that serves everybody around you. But if you can't even fill up your own cup, then you're constantly in a state of scarcity and lack. You're constantly depleted. And then serving from that place, that's what people-pleasing looks like. That's what codependency looks like, is serving from the half-empty cup. And you can't really help the world from that place. So it has to start with self. It has to. And I do believe it changes the world. I really, really do. Mm, so beautiful. I totally agree. It's an embodiment tool. And it's, a, it's an alignment tool. It's an awareness tool. It's like human design is like a roadmap to feeling your best, filling your own cup, being your best, being connected to your body and your energy, and to showing up in the world as your true authentic self. And that's what changes the world. Absolutely. A hundred percent. Oh, I love it. I'm just so grateful for this conversation today, Christy. I love you and I'm so oh, grateful. And thank you so much for being here today. I'm just, I'm so grateful and I'm feeling so lit up. Oh, I'm so honored to be here today. Thank you. And it's just such a pleasure to share this conversation with someone who's equally as obsessed with human design and the value of it, not just for everyone, but just like the, that it's been so valuable in your own lived experience is so powerful. So, so powerful. thank you for having me. I have one final question for you that I like to ask all of my guests. What is your vision for the future of humanity and the earth? Mm. This is such a beautiful question. What I know to be true is that we are all love. That's already what we are, every one of us. Every single one of us on this planet is love. And we get caught in this three-dimensional world. We get caught in the illusion of fear and scarcity and separation and polarity. That person's good, that person's bad. And the reality is, and I know this is the truth, my lived experience to know that this is the truth is that when we leave this, this life, we return to love because we are love and we are all connected. Every single one of us is connected to one another. And so because I know that that's the truth, that is the future. It's the future. It's the past. It's the present. It's it, what it is, what is. And, you know, I think so much of all of the conflict that we experience as humans on this planet comes from that illusion of separation. But I really encourage people, the next time you're in conflict with somebody, to look at them and recognize they're just reflecting you back to you. That's it. And everything is a lesson. Everything is happening for our own benefit. Everything is happening to expand us. It's all happening to help us evolve. It's more than we're all in this together. It really is we are all one organism. We are all one. And so I have only hope for the future of humanity because we're all love. This episode today is my love letter to human design. I'm so passionate about sharing this tool and knowledge because it helped me so much and truly changed my life. Let's celebrate our differences and honor our uniqueness. Let's get to know ourselves on a deeper level. Let's give ourselves some grace. And let's support each other in honoring the ebbs and flows of our energy. And let's support each other in showing up in the world as our authentic selves. I'll end today with a quote by Karen Curry Parker. The greatest gift you can give yourself is permission to be yourself. <laughs>